Good afternoon and welcome to this joint webinar between Engineers Ireland and the National Building Control Office. I'm Raid Phelan, Head of National Building Control Office. For those of you who don't know us, uh, the office is managed by Dublin City Council uh, on behalf of the 31 building control authorities with the objective to promote a culture of compliance with the building regulations. We do this through a programme of education and training, inspections, providing compliance support to building control authorities, builders, owners and designers in relation to works or a building. Our building control administration system is the BCMS and that has 120,000 registered users. As building control authorities are also market surveillance authorities under the EU construction products regulations and Brexit being now back on the table, the office is preparing to undertake a national market surveillance role for construction products. Our office is located beside City Hall at number three Palace Street and uh, Dublin City Council Chief Executive Owen Keegan requested the office of the 21st century. So we operate as a paperless dynamic work environment with all office systems designed to be highly mobile. The office can operate from anywhere and since COVID-19 lockdown, it has been business as usual. So our email uh, is support at nbco.gov.ie. Uh, today, I'm happy to introduce you to Sabrina McDonnell from our team, who is also a chartered member of Engineers Ireland. Our other team members who are on hand to assist Sabrina today include Shirley Lamb, who with Sinead Quinn Phillips in Engineers Ireland are responsible for organising this webinar. Eno Canila, Richard Butler and Kel Dominion uh, have assisted uh, Sabrina in delivering the IT solution to enable this online application process for fire safety certificates, disability access certificates, along with uh, the dispensation and relaxation application process. Uh, we now have the full suite of building control notices, applications and certificates enabled online on the BCMS. For this webinar now, we'll have a questions and answer session. So you see the button there on the bottom of your screen following Sabrina's demonstration, that's time permitting. So use the question and answer feature throughout the webinar and add your questions. If we don't have time at the end, we will collate all of these questions, every single one of them, and email the answers to all attendees. So get your answers, your questions in, and we'll answer anything that you have there. We'll also launch three polls throughout the webinar, and the two polls just before we hand over to Sabrina, um, and one following her demonstration. Each poll will uh, be launched for 30 seconds, and we'd appreciate if you could take part. So we'll put up our uh, first, or no, we'll, we'll actually, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about Sabrina's uh, demonstration first. Uh, Sabrina is going to demonstrate on our live BCMS uh, system. And what we're looking at is the existing use of a three story terraced building in a streetscape uh, with over a shop on the bottom, with over the shop accommodation and storage over, overhead. Uh, the proposed use for the purpose of this. Um, this uh, demonstration is the conversion of the ancillary shop on the ground floor to an independent shop unit with the addition of a small extension for storage at the rear with uh, two dwellings overhead, one on each floor. So this is going to be an extension, a material alteration and a material change of use. And the material alteration includes it, the chimney removal in the centre of the building. And I'm just bringing to your attention here uh, the Department of, uh, of, of Housing Planning and Local Governments bringing back home ma Homes Manual which is a very, very good reference document and provides guidance on how to reuse this type of building. So uh, just before I uh, hand you to Sabrina, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking part in our first poll. Now the questions here is what organisation are you from? Uh, local authority, consultants or contractors or other? So you have 30 seconds just if you didn't mind just uh, clicking the button on one of those. Thank you. And that's our uh, poll results. We have 69% uh, uh, from consultants and local authorities are 13% contractors, 3% and the other then is 15%. We have then one more poll now and then we'll go to Sabrina.
And we're just asking you here, are you a current user of the BCMS? Uh, yes or no, if you didn't mind clicking that. And uh, give you 30 seconds there. So I will now uh, hand you over to Sabrina and we have 63% uh, of you have uh, registered uh, on the BCMS and of current accounts and 37% uh, haven't. So uh, Sabrina, now if you're ready to go, I'll switch off my mic and mic. Okay, thanks, Mairead. So welcome everybody to this webinar. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the BCMS system, which facilitates the online fire safety certificate application process. In terms of just a bit of background and introduction, the Building Control Amendment Regulations, SI9 of 2014, amended Article 54 of the regulations to provide for the BCMS. The amendment defined the Building Control Management System as the information technology based system developed to facilitate the electronic administration of building control matters by building control authorities as the preferred means of building control administration. Article 12 of the Building Control Regulations sets out the requirements in respect of works or a building which require a fire safety certificate. Where a fire safety certificate is required in respect of works or a building, a person shall not carry out such works or make a material change of use to a building in the absence of a fire safety certificate. Also, a new building or an existing building where an extension or material alteration has been made shall not be opened, operated or occupied or permitted to be opened, op operated or occupied unless a fire safety certificate has been granted by the building control authority. As today's example, as Murray has demonstrated, I'm going to submit a fire safety certificate for works to a three-storey terraced masonry building. So to access the BCMS, you can use any web browser, Google Chrome, IE or Firefox, and type in localgov.ie, and you'll see the green BCMS button. So I'm gonna click on BCMS, and you'll be brought to the BCMS homepage. From here, you can log in, or sign up for a new account if you're not an existing customer. To access and use the BCMS for your commencement notices, fire safety certificates, disability access certificates, relaxations, dispensations, and certificates of compliance and completion, you must have a customer account. If you don't have an account, you can see our video on our YouTube channel on how to create an account. And I'm just going to briefly show you our YouTube. So if you type NBCO into the search bar of YouTube, you'll find the NBCO YouTube channel, which currently has eight videos, one of which is BCMS, how to create an account. So subscribe to the NBCO YouTube channel and you'll be notified of upcoming videos. And we will add to this suite of videos in the coming weeks. The process of signing up is similar to any other website registration process. You enter your email address, you're sent an email with a link to follow to set up your account, to set your password and complete some essential information such as first name, last name, phone number and address. For a fire safety certificate, there's four mandatory roles. The applicant, the owner, the person or firm to whom notification should be forwarded and the person or firms responsible for preparation of accompanying plans, calculations and specifications. And each person must have an account in order to be nominated and accept their role. The application process itself is quite simple. For those already familiar with the commencement notice process, there's no requirement for an online assessment. So the applications process is somewhat simpler. And just another point of note, if you're an existing customer on BCMS, you don't need a new account in order to submit applications. Okay, so I have an account on BCMS, so I'm going to log in with my existing account.
For those of you familiar with the BCMS, you'll see a new tab called My Applications, which is currently in beta mode, as well as the current the tabs which were available previously, My Dashboard, My Details, My Notices, My Certificates and Take a Tour. So I'm going to click on the New Application link. You will then see the seven different application types which you can apply for. New Fire Safety Certificate, New Revised Fire Safety Certificate, New Regularization Certificate, New Disability Access Certificate, New Revised Disability Access Certificate, New Dispensation and New Relaxation. So click the New Application button beside the relevant application type. In this case, it's a new Fire Safety Certificate. You'll be then brought to the Project Particulars tab and you can start entering the details of the project. Point of note at this stage, anything marked with the red asterisk is a mandatory field and must be completed. And where you see a green circle with an I in the middle, this is an information widget for that field. So select the local authorities that you're making the application to. In this case, I'm going to use local authority. The project name is a very important piece of information and must clearly identify the works or building to which the application relates. This information will appear on the statutory building control register as well as in email communication. You should not use your own name or your client's name as part of the project name as it will appear as information on the statutory public register. So the information widget gives an example of what to use here. And for the purposes of demonstration for today, I'm going to use works to a three-story terrace masonry building used as shop at 123 Palace Apartment 2. The next field is has planning permission been applied for or granted for works or building? I'm going to select yes in this instance. If you select yes, you're prompted for date permission was granted. If that's applicable, complete the date and the planning permission reference number. The next field is seven day notice tick box. If you're submitting the fire safety certificate with a seven day notice, which is a commencement notice, you can tick the seven day notice box and complete the seven day notice submission number. Next field is the classification of bit works or building. If I select construction of a new building, I can't select any other classification type. For today, I'm going to select material alteration, extension to a building, material change of use, all of which are multi-select. So the next field is the development description. Again, this is a, a very important field. It must clearly describe the development or works and ensure the building control authority will have enough information to enable validation assessment without ambiguity. Again, there's some information in the information widget as to what is required here. For the purpose of today, as Murray described, Our description is the construction of a single storey extension to rear of news agent shop for storage at ground floor level, change of use of existing shop storage area at first floor level to single dwelling unit and access at ground floor, and material alteration consisting of removal of existing chimney and internal walls at second floor level for single dwelling unit. We're then going to move on to the location of the proposed development. If you've selected as classification a new building, you cannot enter an air code. So you enter the street, the town, the county, which is the county you're submitting to, which is the building control authority, and click search by address, and the latitude and longitude will automatically populate. This is not a new building, so I'm going to enter the air code. I'm going to click search by air code, and you'll see a pin drop on the map. If you're happy with the pin location, if you're not happy with the pin location, you can move the pin. Moving the pin will alter the address. So I'm going to correct this address. I'm 
and the county is Dublin City. Latitude and longitude has, have been populated. So I'm going to click save and continue. So I have a green tick on the project particulars tab, which means all the required information has been entered and I can proceed to the application details tab. So I'm going to click on application details and click on edit. So the first field is the use of proposed works or building. This is a multi-select field, so you can select more than one if applicable. And you can refer to part B TGD table 0.1 for guidance here. So in this instance, I'm selecting residential dwelling and shop. So for each use of proposed works or building, you need to select a corresponding subgroup. So we are going to select dwelling, apartment flat and shop other. You'll also be asked to select the existing use of the building, and in this case, it's a shop. The next field is main construction type. So select the construction material type of the main structure of the building. Again, it's a multi-select field. In this case, we have a masonry building. And then you're asked to enter the information, the site areas, the site area, which in this case is 2,500. The number of basement stories in this case is zero. And in the information, which is you'll see story is the means any of the parts into which the building is divided horizontally above or below ground level, but excluding any part of the building situated above the level of the roof or in the roof space or below the level of the lowest floor, which is intended for the protection of a water tank or lift motor room or similar use and is not intended for or adapted to be used for habitable purposes or as a workroom or as a storeroom. And you can refer to part B, TGD diagram 36. So number of stories above ground level. In our case, it's three. We've ground floor, first floor and second floor. Height of top floor above ground level in our case is 4.6. Total floor area of the entire building. Again, if you refer to the information widget, floor area in relation to a building means the area bounded by the inner finished surfaces of the enclosing walls or on any side where there is no enclosing wall by the outermost edge of the floor on that side and in calculating the area of a building or part of a building, there shall be included in such area the space occupied by any walls, shafts, ducts or structure within the area being measured. So in our case, Existing shop, 73.8, the extension is 36.7, entrance to first floor unit is 7.4, first floor change of use is 84.3, and second floor material alterations is 84.3. The total here is 286.5. The total area of the ground floor is the existing shop plus the extension, 78.9. The total area of the material change of use is 91.7. The total area of the existing building is 249.8. Floor area minus the extension. The floor area of the building extension, 36.7. Total combined floor area again is 286. 0.5 and the area of material alteration is 84.3. So once you're happy with the information entered, you can click save and continue. And again, you'll see a green tick on the applications tab, which means that you've entered all of the required information and we can proceed to the nominate roles tab. What's most important at the nominate role section is that everybody being nominated has a registered account on the BCMS. So I'm going to click to edit. And the first role is the applicant. The applicant is the person making the application and maybe the owner or the leaseholder. So I'm going to, you can enter the email address of the applicant. In this case, I'm going to assign myself to that role and I'm going to say that I am the leaseholder.
So once you enter the email address of a registered person on the BCMS, the first name and last name auto populate and the applicant will automatically receive notifications. Next is the owner. The owner is the person who has commissioned or paid for the works and who has legal entitlement to have such works carried out on their behalf. If the owner is selected above, then this will auto populate the owner details. If the owner is not the applicant, then you must enter the owner's details. So in this instance, we want to nominate Mike Murphy as So Michael Murphy is the owner. The next is the person or firms to whom notification should be forwarded. In this instance, I'm going to nominate some of my colleagues from the MBCO so that they can accept their roles. Person or firm to whom notification should be forwarded will automatically receive notification. The next is the person or firms responsible for preparation of accompanying plans, calculations and specifications. Again, enter the email address of the relevant individual and first name and last name would be populated if they have a registered account. I'm going to nominate Aina in this role. And if you wish this role on this individual to receive notifications, you tick receive notification checkbox. And finally, it's other. If you require another person or firm to receive notifications, you can complete the other role. However, this is not mandatory. So I'm going to click to save and continue. So as you can see, there is not a green tick beside the nominate roles tab. Each individual nominated will have to log in and accept their role. So I, as the applicant, have been nominated for the role of applicant. So I'm I can see two buttons, accept, reject. I'm going to accept that role. And you can see my status has changed to accepted. And Aina has also accepted his role. He's pretty quick off the mark there. So just to demonstrate the roles, um, acceptance process, I'm going to log out and log back in as Michael Murphy, the owner, just to demonstrate how he accepts his role. Again, we have a YouTube video on our YouTube channel on BCMS roles acceptance. If there is any problems accepting a role, you can click on the video and view how to accept your role. And I'm just going to show you an example of the email which the individual will get on role nomination. So I can see the email has gone to Michael, Mr. Michael Murphy, application name, works for Tree Story Terrace Masonry Building at Tree Palace Street, Dublin. You have received this email because you've been assigned the role of owner by the Fire Safety Certificate with submission number 3000132. Please log into the portal and accept or reject this role. So each role nomination will get an email similar to this. So I'm going to log out as the applicant and log in as Michael and just show you how Michael accepts his role. Okay, so I'm logged in as the owner, Michael. So I'm going to go on to My Applications. And once you click on the My Applications tab, you can see all of your existing applications. I've been using this account quite a lot for testing. So Michael has a lot of applications. So you find the relevant application. 
and you can see on the nominate roles tab I have a button to accept or reject my role so I'm going to accept my role as the owner And I can see as the owner, not as the, as the applicant, I can view the details, but I can't edit any of these details. So I'm going to log out as the owner and log back in as the applicant to complete the submission process. So as the applicant, I'm going to go back onto relevant application. So I can now see a green tick on the nominate roles tab. I accepted my role as the applicant, the owner Michael Murphy accepted his role and Kelda and Aina have logged in and accepted their roles too. So I can now proceed to the statutory documents tab. There's only one statutory document required for a fire safety certificate application. So I'm going to download the form. The downloaded form will have pre-populated with the information entered on the project particulars and the application details and the nominate roles tab. So I'm going to click to download. I see the form of application for fire safety certificate. Check the details are correct. The local authority is correct. Your submission number the applicant, uh, I am the leaseholder, my name and my address, my telephone number, the owner of the works is Michael, Kelda is the name and address of person or firms whom notification should be forwarded and her address, name and address of person or firms responsible for preparation of accompanying plans, calculations, specifications is Aina and his address and the address of the proposed works appears here also. The nature of the proposed works, I've selected material alteration, material change of use and extension, and a brief description. So the description here will be truncated. However, the BCMS, the Building Control Authority will see the full description that you have entered on the BCMS system. So use of the proposed works, existing use and new use, and the details we entered in the application details section. You'll also see the amount of fee which is to accompany the application. Okay, so I download the form, I print, I sign, and I scan and I upload the form. So I'm going to click on edit. So I can drag and drop the files or I can browse through relevant file and select it for upload. So this is my signed version of the fire safety certificate. Click on save. And you will see your document appear. So the file name, the document type, and there's a little trash can icon on the right hand side. If you do make a mistake, you can just remove that file and go through the process again. So I'm going to click save and continue. And you can now see that your statutory documents tab has a green tick. So I can proceed to the supporting document section. So if I click on edit on the supporting documents, it gives me some information as to what's required in the supporting document section, as well as the required statutory document. Please upload all of the below additional supporting documents. Site plan, site location plan, fork plan, section elevation compliance report and floor area fee calculation drawing. Again, you can drag and drop or you can browse and select your file. I'm going to browse. and select my file. And for the purposes of demonstration, the document type is multi-select, so some documents may be combined. I'm going to select all of the required document types in order just to demonstrate the process, but this would not be the norm in practice. So 
we want to tick site plan, site location plan, floor plan, section, elevation, appliance report, floor area fee calculation drawing. So I'm going to enter my document name. The document name should be clear and assist the billing toll authority in the validation process. Drawing size and drawing scale is mandatory for these document types. And drawing number, click on save. So again, your document will appear at the bottom of the screen, the document type, the document name, and the information relating to the document. And you'll see the trash icon if you want to remove a document. And you just repeat this process as many times as required to enter your, your support and documentation. So I'm going to click save and continue. And you'll see now there's a green tick beside my supporting document section which means I've uploaded all of the required documents in the supporting document section. So I can proceed onto the payment tab. So at this stage, you're shown a summary of your application, the submission ID, the application type, the application status, and a description as you entered. So you're happy with the details. You can enter your credit card information. The amount of fee appears at the bottom of the screen and you process the online payment. In this instance, I'm going to request an exemption from fees. I'm going to tick the request an exemption from fees box. And you see some information. If you wish to claim an exemption from fees, you should must submit a fee exemption form outlining your reasons. This document should must be uploaded as part as a supporting document. By clicking the pay button, you are confirming you're familiar with Article 22 of the Building Control Regulations as amended and that you're requesting an exemption from fees for this notice for the reasons outlined above. So the reason I'm applying for an exemption is that this application is on behalf of an approved housing body. And I'm saying that I have included the fee exemption form from the relevant building control authority in the support and documentation section. So I'm going to click pay and submit. So you can see now that my application has submitted successfully. The tabs are now locked. So you cannot make any changes or amendments to the application unless on request by the building control authority through an S14 or an X16 request. So that's how you submit a fire safety certificate. Thanks for your time and attention. Help videos will become available on our YouTube channel, so subscribe. And if you have any support requirements in the coming weeks, contact your building control authority or email us at the NBCO at support at nbco.gov.ie. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sabrina, for that. Um, we've had quite a substantial uh, number of questions there, and uh, I've tried to answer them as we go along there. But we are going to take all of those. I think we'll take all of those questions because some of them are kind of duplicate questions. And we will answer every single one of them, and we will circulate it to everybody at this webinar. Uh, the, uh, we have another the engine, uh, the, we have actually uh, another poll that we would like to put up if you didn't mind answering it now. And uh, the questions are what topic would you like to see the NBCO and Engineers Ireland present in the future for future webinars or if you would like and uh, BCMS or Building Regulations or Building Control Act or Enforcement. And um, we do have uh, couple of other webinars in the pipeline we haven't got dates yet and we have the uh, part L of the billing regulations Pat Nestor the head of uh, billing control at Dublin City Council uh, will deliver that and we'll, we'll, we'll um, arrange a time and a date and uh, it should Engineers Ireland will circulate that. We have another one where uh, 
Richard Butler, Senior Executive Professional with the National Building Control Office, will uh, give a webinar on the uh, SI number 243 of 2012, which is uh, the Energy Performance in Building Regulations and bin Building Energy Rating as it relates to public buildings, new and existing buildings and buildings for sale and letting. And um, yeah, we have the results of that poll there. So building regulations, we, we can do that. We'll, we'll have a look at that. And we will have another, the third one, we will in now, Kanila, our senior executive professional, will demonstrate a similar process for the disability access certificate. So for the purpose of this, I would uh, like to the, thank uh, Engineers Ireland and the MBCO and Engineers Ireland would like to thank everybody for their attendance. And uh, for Engineers Ireland members, uh, you can uh, gain a, a CPD award of one hour, so you can put this in for your CPD. And I'd also like to thank Sinead Quinn Phillips from Engineers Ireland, Sabrina MacDonald, and Shirley Lamb from the National Building Control Office for organising this webinar, and uh, Aina out there and Kelda for accepting the roles quite promptly. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we hope to see you again. So, uh, and safe.